Right, welcome to part two. So, this is where we got to last time. I've cleaned up um, these bits, whatever you'd like to call them. I've taken off where the welds were, cleaned them all up, just give them a quick go over with a sander. And I've also taken a little chamfer off both ends, both sides. And also, I've marked the middle uh, of the top and taken a little chamfer off there as well and at the sides just so we get sort of a half decent weld so that when I grind it all off and blend it in we've still got a, a bit of a weld there so I'm just going to hold these up tack them in and hopefully all will be well all right there's no real sort of best way to do this I don't think there's no way I can hold it, but I'm going to try and put the, the shinier side on the outside. Um, or the less pitted side, should I say, rather than the shinier side. So that I can sand the outside a bit better without quite so many pits in it. Without leaving so many pits in it. I'm just going to put a little tack on all of these. I think as long as I get the top bit in the centre, then they should all look fairly similar. Because forging these all together has produced some fairly similar pieces. There you go. I'm going to whip round, do them all in order. Try and find the decent side outwards. A little tack. That's it. Find another way another decent one. It's all a bit fiddly this, there's no real way, I suppose. If I had some sort of a clamp or a magnet or something, I could some small magnets. But anyway, we'll manage. I won't bore you with doing them all at the moment. So there we go, as if by magic, they're all in. I've welded them all up. Still a bit warm. I welded on the inside as well, you can see. Just put a few tacks on the inside. Not f complete full weld on the inside, but just uh, enough to make it that little bit stronger so I won't completely grind off the inside weld right I've ground most of it off with the flap disc and sort of blended some of it but not completely um, I'm going to leave that for the much finer sandpaper once it's all sort of put together. I don't want to start getting it all done finally now and then put more marks in it later then have to um, get them out. So I'm going to use these little twist on twist off, I think they're called Rolock discs just to get a bit more of the uh, marks out and they come in all sorts of different grades and shapes. There's um, sort of scotch bright ones as well so I'm just going to give the worst of it a quick go. I'm going to try and get right into the sort of little corners with this. So this isn't the the final finish, but I want to get it somewhere near. Just keep it. It's like anything, you keep, like when you're forging, you know, if you keep it somewhere near straight when you're making things and somewhere near level, when you come to finish it off and, and uh, get to the final stages, it's that much easier if you've kept everything just almost there. I love this little sander, or this little, um, I don't know what you call it, sort of, sort of like a 90 degree die grinder type thing. 
they do some, these bigger these are the bigger discs and they do some slightly smaller ones as well which I've got some of but uh, they're really nice for just sort of blending stuff in getting rid of weld marks trouble is it takes so long you know you can be here for hours and hours and like I say I don't want to go too far you get carried away sometimes you sort of like the results and you just keep going so I'm just going to try A slightly different grit, this is an even finer. You can see how very little it's taking off. Just trying to find all the little blemishes. You can do some quite detailed work with these things. Um, so I love them. I think I bought this lot when I was making the handbrakes for the trolleys, for the carts. I needed a lot of blending and polishing. I don't know whether I've used it since, to be honest. I haven't done anything that's warranted such detailed work. Anyway, so, next job is, let's see, that's not looking too bad. Now I've discovered that <laughs> you won't see half of it because the top will be on there. Anyway, um, let's think what the next job's going to be. Oh yeah, put the top on. I've got to make a square top before I put the cone on. So let's see if I can find myself a bit of plate, mark it out, I've cut it up, it's about, I think it's about uh, five and a half inches, something like that. I'm just going to scribe a line down each side of about, I don't know, five eighths of an inch, something like that, maybe just under, just over half inch. And I'm going to cut the corners out so that we can fold them but I'm not going to cut them out square because I'm not going to fold this down to 90 degrees because I want it to sort of follow the, the lines of the hood so it's going to be slightly flared so I'm just going to cut these at a little bit of an angle Again, this tool dead handy for this sort of thing. Just nick, nicking out these little corners. Otherwise, it would be hacksaw or grinding disc or something, or cutting disc. Unless, of course, you've got a corner notcher. Then it wouldn't be much good for this particular job because I, as I'm doing them, at, doing them at an angle. You can see there now. They're sort of not a square, they're more like a V in the corners. Just bend them off. Alright, let's go and see if we can set it up to bend it. Because unfortunately, I don't have a box and pan folder. So I'm going to try and wing it by using my little miracle bender. I've put some, because it's that much taller, i put a couple of bits of inch 3.8 in the back um, and one behind the sort of bending arm so hopefully when I pull it it'll bend it. Well, it's actually not doing it very well I don't quite know why it's not really working it keeps pulling away No, I don't think this is going to be a particular success. I think it's almost there, but 
It's not working properly. So, what are we going to do? I've got to get this done. So, uh, I put a wider block in there with a sharper end on it, or edge, and I've clamped a piece to the folding arm, and that doesn't seem to be working either. <laughs> no, that don't seem to be working. Um, it's sort of pulling it around as I'm tightening up the the. Uh, you can see there as I'm tightening up the bending blade. It's it is actually pulling it around a bit, but it's not doing what I expected it to do. It's coming away for some reason. I can't quite work out why. What are we going to do now? Um, back to the drawing board. Um, I suppose I could just leave it there and knock it round. Let's try moving that back a bit more. Again, it's the same old thing. It's, it's I don't can't work out why it's pulling away. I wonder if I should. Uh, hmm, don't know. But it ain't working. I have to think of another method, and this is what I've come up with, just <laughs> bending it over in the vise. I've put two blocks of, of uh, steel in, one inside and one outside, and I've got a rubber mallet, and I'm just going to tap it over. Since my bending efforts in the other machine didn't work. That's the trouble, you, you, all these jobs, you could have all these machines and they just take up so much room and you hardly ever use them. But if you haven't got them, it's a real struggle sometimes. Lots of improvisation going on. So anyway, we got there in the end. Tapped them round. Not 100% but I can fiddle about with that in a minute. And you can see what I mean, it's not um, bent to 90 degrees. You see there's a little taper on it slight, slightly. Just so that it sort of follows the edge of the um, the other hood. I've now centre dotted it as well while I was at it because the bar's got to go through the middle that holds it all up. So I thought I'd do that before I um, go too far and forget. Because I just cross cornered it before I um, bent the sides up. So now I'm just going to tack these corners together. A good old magnet. Oh, that's a bit warm. Last one. Now this one's got a bit of a gap on it so I might have to just Put a few spots here and there. That's got it. Out, out. That's warm. Of course, it's not going to focus, is it? Come on, focus you. No, all right. Anyway, you get the idea. It's welded. So I just got to set it up, grind it off. Again, the old magnet helps to hold it. We just take the edge off. I think I'm, to be honest, when I'm making this, I'm not sure if I'm making it out of too heavy a materials because I seem to be making heavy work for myself. I guess when they make them out of copper, you can use fairly heavy copper, but it be, obviously it it forms that much easier. Um, I guess. Not being a sort of pucker sheet metal worker, I could probably have used thinner sheet, but this is the sort of this is thin compared with what I'm used to using. This is only this particular bit I think is sixteen gauge, which is I like, really like compared with the sort of stuff I'm normally using. That the, the the smallest I normally use is about fourteen gauge. And that I sort of consider quite light. Um Anyway, we're getting there. 
At least it will last. It's not going to rot away very quickly. Hopefully, once it's all up and running, it will outlive me. One day someone might ask where that came from. No bugger will know. <laughs> I don't tend to uh, put my name on anything. Alright, nearly done. Just blending it all in. Just give the top edge a quick, or the bottom edge a quick level off. Tidy it all up. Get rid of the cut edge. Alright. Take the bits off, the burrs. Okay, so I'm pleased with that. Yep, that's come up quite nice. Of course, come on, focus you. That's it, there. Yep, yeah, there you go. That's not bad. When that's up in the air, you won't see that. That'll do. Nice. Pleased with that. Right, now what? Um, we've got to drill it. And I've got this bit of half inch bar. Um, I don't know why I've got half inch bar. It's actually, it is actually half inch. It's not um, metric. It really is half inch. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's a bit of bright bar. So this is what I'm going to use to make the hook, and it's going to have to go through the top of this, and I'll have to put a thread on the end of it. So let's see if we can find a tap. No, let's see if we can find a die even. Um, I've got dozens kicking about. This light in the big tin I very rarely use. This is my go-to tin that I use mostly, but most of them are metric, either the, either metric or um, gas threads. I think there's BSPs and M10s and all sorts, but I don't think we've got any uh, Imperials in here. I don't see what half of these are. Oh, there's a half inch, but it's not. That's a BSF. So that one ain't no good. Unless, of course, I can find a BSF nut. But I'm much more likely to find a Whitworth nut. What's that one? Oh, that's half inch Whitworth, but it's a die nut. But I shall keep that out just in case I can't find a proper die, then I think I'm going to have to use that. Alright, let's have a little look around in here, see what we've got amongst the the dregs. I can't remember where these came from. I got a box of taps, a box of dies, and there was dozens of them. And they're all going like this, red rusty. But uh, some of them work. Well, they all work to a degree. I tend to use them more for cleaning up threads rather than actually cutting threads. That one looks... Oh, hang on. What's going on? Sorry. An interruption. Someone came to the door. Right, where was that one I had? Because I think that one was looked promising because it's been cleaned up. So I might have used this before. Yep, there we go. Half inch Whitworth. That's the one then. So there's all sorts of bits and pieces in here. Well, hang on to them, you never know. They might come in handy one day, just for cleaning up a thread. Right, let's drill the plate with a half inch hole. Obviously pilot hole first. We can find a half inch drill somewhere. Lo and behold, there's one. Let's knock 
this throat. Proper twist drills aren't much cop for putting through pl thin sheet. They always leave a massive burr, you can see there. But that'll grind off. No bother. Alright, see if it fits. It does, but it's a bit tight. It's a, it is a real good spot on half inch fit and that is a little bit too tight because by the time it's powder coated and I welded a nut under there that might be a bit too tight so I'm just gonna get the die grinder out and just open it up just a very touch just so that it's got a little bit of play in there I'm sure I've got some drills that are just over half inch somewhere but couldn't actually find them. That's better. Much better. Yeah. Super. So let's go and get the forger light and we'll see if we can put the hook on there and then uh, think about tapping it. No, dyeing it threading it, whatever. You know what I mean. Okay, so gonna use my big hammer get started on this. Gonna get a reasonable heat on it hopefully. And start tapering it. Wind her up. as normal. Draw it out square. As I've said on many many occasions if you draw it out round it'll just split. You can't draw tapers out round. Draw them out square then round them off. I bet you're all bored of me saying that by now. Right, I want a reasonable length of taper on this. Um, don't want it too short. I want to you know, get half a half decent hook on the end, so I want it to be. Oh, I don't know. You'll see. It's not a short taper anyway. Relatively long taper. You see the camera shaking when I hit that. I think the floor must be not very stable because the camera is quite away from where I'm working. Yeah, it seems to be vibrating. God knows what it'd be like if I had a power hammer in here. Right, there you go. You can see it's probably four inches or so, that taper. That should be long enough. So I think I'll probably start turning it back into round now. Get rid of my diagram for the other bits. Alright, go on the sort of uh, diamonds now. Knock them off. Then knock the next ones off. Then knock the next ones off. Just keep knocking off the the corners. And eventually, it turns back into round. And it gets rounder as it gets cooler. If that makes sense. I don't know why, but these just seem to do less hammer marks as it gets colder, which turns it somehow rounder. I suppose when you're hitting it hot you're putting a lot more hammer marks back into it. And as it cold, gets colder you're not, you're just taking them out. 
I don't know. Don't know if I know what I'm talking about half the time. And you can see the technique there. Keep your hammer just going up and down and pull the material underneath it. So you're you're acting a bit like a power hammer, you're just going up and down with your right hand. Your left hand's doing all the work. Or well, the majority of the work. That's quite a good demonstration of it there. And see that's come up quite round. One or two little marks on it, but hey, this wants to look handmade. If I didn't want it to look handmade, I could stick it under the, around the grinder, but I don't want to. This has got to look handmade. So now we're just going to put the hook on the end. And again, keep your material moving. If you stop it, you'll end up with a flat. So keep everything moving. Oh, I've just cooled out the very end so I can hit it without doing too much damage to it. If I started hitting it as it was hot, I'd just destroy what I've made. So I'm just going to get it hot again, a bit further down, and try and keep that very hook cooled out. And see it's still cooled out a little bit, but I'm just going to take a little bit more out of it. And I can actually hit it. I'm not worried about doing too much damage to it. Now, I haven't got any preconceived idea of what size this hook needs to be. I'm sort of doing it as I go, working it out as I go. I'm making approximately what I think might be about right. And then I'm going to sort of tweak it as I go. Um, sorry, interruption again. People, eh? Alright, just cool out that tip again. So I can pull that back a bit more. I want it to try and get it a bit rounder. It's not very round at the moment. I've got sort of sidetracked a bit with bloody people coming in and out. I've lost my train of thought of how I'm or what I'm actually trying to achieve. Well that's not it actually. I want it rounder. This is more that's more of a sort of a shepherd's hook or crook. I don't really want that. I want I want it much rounder and I don't quite know how I'm gonna achieve that at the moment. But we're getting there. I think we just need to knock that down a bit. And that might make it a bit rounder. Cool it out again. Mm, don't really know what I'm doing. Open it up again. I to. I need to sort of open the width of it up a bit. Um, it's got to be fairly open at the bottom because we've got to get it over a hook. Um, the bracket, which I've yet to make, that's going to be coming up in one of the other parts. Let's see, it's it's getting rounder, but I still need the that base open a bit more. Just here, so I can get it over the hook. So I'm going to. See if I can put it over my. I've got a little um, sort of different anvil stake down in my hardy. There it is in my swage block. I'm just going to try that because it's got quite a round beak on it. So I'm going to see if I can use that to round it off a bit. Yeah, that's a bit better. Let's knock it right up a bit more. Ah, that's better. Gently on the tip. That's much better. Yeah, we're getting there now. Just level that 
out a bit. I want to level it out without thinning it out. I want to keep that at the half inch if I can. That's coming up much better, much rounder, still open. Right, let's see if we can just finish it off. Just level it up because the, the tip has got twisted. So I'm just trying to straighten that back up. Lots of very light blows. See, it's much straighter now. I don't know if you can see it. And that's roughly the shape I want. Brush it up, take the worst of the scale off. That'll do. Cool that out. That should also harden it a little bit. There you go. I hope you can see that. A little focus. Come on, focus. Yeah, that's about it, I think. There you go. That's sort of what I was looking for. Nice and round and a big enough gap there to get it on the hook. Now I've just got to cut that off however long it needs to be. Put a thread on it. Before we get to that stage though, I've got another little uh, thing I need to stick in the fire. This half, well, it's a it's a uh, squashed spear, and I want to make it a bit thinner. It's about I don't know five eighths thick at the moment, and I want to make it down to about half inch or less. So I'm just going to see if I can find some tongs that will fit this. There we go. Those will probably do it. I'm going to stick that in, get it warm, and give it some beans. I don't know where I got these from. I was doing another job and I was using them as spacers, I think. I used to drill them and put them in between bars. So I just happened to find, find a couple lying about and thought they'd be perfect for the top of this. I'm going to use Big Bertha. See if we can do it some damage. Alright. What I'm going to do is just use this bit of, I think it's about inch and a half by three quarter solid. Because I don't have a flatter. If I had a flatter, that's what I would use. One of these days I might make myself one or even just go out and buy one. But this seems to be doing the trick at the moment. Give it some beans. Keep Just want to make sure it's staying flat. I don't want it sort of thick one side and thin the other. I want to try and keep it even. That's doing a lovely job. All right, and that'll probably just about do it. Let's see if we can find the original. There you go. That's what the original one looked like. So it actually has. If I can get the camera to zoom in and focus. Come on, focus, focus, focus. Why do these cameras take so long to focus? I know it's dark in here, but it ain't that dark. Hang on, let me do a bit of manual focusing. To press the button and twiddle the knob. And here we go, here we go, here we go. Got it. Manual focus. So you can see the difference. It's already much thinner, a little bit wider, which is exactly what I wanted. 
the original one it was just a little bit too narrow or small widthways not depthways well anyway circumference diameter was too small so that was the original which started out at what we got there uh, about 5.8 yeah that is about 5.8 16mm and it's ended up just under half inch about 12 and a half mil perfect absolutely perfect so we'll be cleaning them up, them up in the next part because I'm just about to run out of time uh, you can see the cone there on top it's only paper at the moment and it's not actually very right it's too wide at the bottom too narrow at the top and it just doesn't look right somehow so I'm going to make another one I've brought as you can see brought two paper templates with me and neither of them are right now I know what I want I will sort out another one and then hopefully we'll get it all put together so catch up with me on part three which hopefully will be next week